Welcome to our home. Would you like to come in? I'd love to show you our foyer adorned in crimson ribbons of velvet and satin. Let me show you where we relax each evening. To keep things simple, fresh evergreens, ivy, and rose hips were collected from our yard and added to a store-bought green garland. At the end of the video, I will show you how I attached it to our mantle. A fresh evergreen wreath was added to the wall, and I'm still not sure if I'm going to add a bow or not. I'm simply enjoying the scent. And here are the fire starters that I made at the ready for the nights we want to make a nice, warm, cozy fire. Listening to this song play. I feel like I'm friends with so many of you. I thought I would share a private memory that is so important and special to me. Enough that it does make me well up sometimes when I think about it. Ooh, I have to compose myself, but I had a very special third grade teacher. Her name was Mrs. Cassidy, and she is the first one who ever said to me that I learn things differently than other children and to not get frustrated and that I have a great future ahead of me and I will make my own path. And for some reason, I still don't know why, she gave me four of these nativity scene pieces and told me that it was a gift from her. And like I said, to this day, I still don't know why that she gave them to me, but she did help me know that I am a special person and that I do learn things differently and that it's okay. Um, I brought these pieces home and my father decided to make a manger for it. So I went out in the workshop with him and together we created this manger. And the two memories together are very fond and special to me. For those who are visiting for the first time or has missed one of my past videos that mentions this, but I am dyslexic, I do have attention deficit disorder. And as a child, I was the class clown, and school was not an easy time for me. Okay, enough of that serious stuff. Let's head into the sitting room, our tally-ho room, where I have a fox, hound, and horse theme going on. This room was inspired by the Groton Hunt Group. 
I found an old photo of the group going down Main Street on their horses, and I found this fabulous wallpaper called Tally Ho from Sanderson in Europe. Since this room is new to us this year, I decided to put a Christmas tree in here that had a somewhat hunt theme and outdoor look to it. So I'm going to show you some things that are hidden on our Christmas tree here in this room in just a moment. Once again, taking my cues from the wallpaper, I added a top hat to the tree. I have a tartan ribbon here just to show a little bit of my Scottish roots. And hidden amongst the branches, away from the hunt group, hiding, are foxes. So let's go in and find them ourselves. This cute little couple was somewhat of a surprise to me. I had already pulled together the tree and decorated it, knowing I was going to do the fox theme. I opened up a Christmas box and I found them inside, forgetting I purchased them while I was with a friend at a garden center last year. It's almost as if I knew last year what I'd be doing this year, but I didn't. I found this little cute fox at a garden center in Littleton. And this one I purchased on Amazon as of a couple weeks ago. It was sold out. I will check to see if it's back in stock. I'm currently on my own fox hunt and looking for ornaments I'll be adding next year. And I promise, no foxes were injured during the filming of this video. The tree also has top hats and horses and mice that you might find outside. This fox does not realize how close a hound really is. As the snow falls during one of our first snowstorms of the season, this room is one of the coziest rooms in our house. The sitting room is where my husband will also sneak away to watch some of his golf. Do you remember the pine cone Christmas tree that I made and shared the tutorial with you? Here it is under a cloche with fairy lights. And speaking of fairies, one thing you might not know about me is I have fairies hidden in almost every single room of our house and during Christmas, they really like to come out and play. Let's head into the kitchen. First, I'd love to put together a pot of potpourri to have it simmer on the stove, and then I will show you the rest. There are so many variations to make your own simmering potpourri, but I had this on hand. I have oranges, apples, cranberries. I have cloves, you could also use ground cloves, cinnamon, and of course, water. I forgot to mention I add a sprig of pine and then I also added some rosemary a little later on. And obviously I don't think you can ever have too much cinnamon in your potpourri. What I like to do is I bring it to a boil then I turn it down to a simmer and I always set my oven timer because sometimes I do get distracted and it's easy to forget that it's going. You want to make sure you're always adding some water to it or better yet, shutting the stove off when you're done. And for the many of you that reminded me I promised to read The Night Before Christmas last year, I will be reading it to you this year. 
I'm going to put the link below for this Christmas tree and how I came up with the theme regarding the fruit theme. But on the tree, I do have cookie cutters and apple cinnamon ornaments and a lot of things that remind me of my childhood. In another very short video, I'm going to be showing you how I take these persimmons and check to see if we're going to have a heavy snow winter or mild winter. I've done that each year with my daughter and she's the one that showed this to me. I can't wait to show you what I see inside. I mentioned in a past video that this reindeer that I have lovingly called Glitzen and who I believe is Mrs. Claus's personal female reindeer was going to move but I decided to keep her in the kitchen here. I have the glitzy glam side of the kitchen and I have the American colonial side of the kitchen and I realized unless you have two heads which would be kind of freaky you can't see both sides really at the same time so I went with it. I decided to surround myself with things that I enjoy which I enjoy bling as much as I enjoy Americana Colonial. I'm thinking it's safe to assume you have seen this done over and over, but I thought I'd just point out the silver baubles are actually a garland. I have some loose green ornaments, and then I mix the two and the other. It's garland and baubles. Remember I mentioned that I have fairies hidden all over the home? Well, I also have a box of fairies that I use every year on one dedicated Christmas tree. But this year I decided only a few were going to come out to play. I'm going to select ones that have a kitchen theme or work well on the kitchen Christmas tree. So this guy that's holding a spoon, I, he had some broken wings, so I fixed him. I have some burgundy colored Santas that will work nicely with the cranberries that are on the tree. And then the guy that's laying down there, He's actually holding a pear and a basket of fruit. So I'm going to use him as the tree topper, which he's actually held that position every year since I've gotten him. And here is my fruit themed Christmas tree with the orange slices that I dried, some apple cinnamon ornaments that I made. I have some faux apples on here. Here's our little elf that's going to be looking over the kitchen and watching me cook and bake for the rest of the season. And on the tray I also have some of the copper cookie cutters that I used myself as a child. There is so much more I could do with this hutch, and in my world, decorating is never done. So after this video, I know I'll be doing more to the hutch, but I wanted to get this video loaded to share with you now, and then you'll see more in future videos. This will be like a backdrop for me. But on here I have some rooted rosemary and thyme that I clip, and I've actually used some of that in the potpourri that I shared with you. I have a bin of some blank Christmas cards and envelopes for some of those last minute cards I forget to send out. And I have some of my pewter collection along with red and burgundy cookbooks. I found this pewter cup etched with an L years ago. And truth be told, I love to use it when I want to feel a little bit regal. In a past video, this glass globe was shown and I was asked where I got it. I wish I knew. Um, I have a pair. They actually just pop into a regular candle holder. They're perfect for tea lights and you can also put metal lampshades on them. I'm going to try to search for a vendor or see if I can find more of them, but I've had them for so long. I really, I, I'm sorry, I can't share where I got them.
When I'm out and about, I love to pick up beeswax candles, whether it looks like the honeycomb or the solid pour. They just give off a nice, wonderful scent, and I like knowing that they're all natural. Our maritime dining room. Now, once again, there is so much more I could have done to this room, but I mentioned that this year for me is about simplifying and I chose not to bring out every and all of my ornaments. So I kept the mantle very simple. The tree is the Thanksgiving tree that I added a few more baubles. And I'm gonna share something about this tree with you in a moment that I did to it for fun. And I don't know if I'll do it next year, but I enjoyed doing it. Wanting to use what I already had, I pulled this faux magnolia garland out of the attic and I added some fairy lights and then tucked within it, you're going to see some brass stars. Those are actually napkin rings that I picked up at a consignment store recently and I decided to tuck them into the garland right now and then when I set the dining table, I will pull those out for the holiday season. Remember I said I have a little secret or fun thing I did with the Christmas tree? Well, at least I think it's fun, and let me share that with you. I wanted to find some ornaments that had a sea glass green to them, and I couldn't find them at the few stores I went to. I didn't want to go out and shop at a lot of places. But when I was looking around the dining room, I noticed in my windows I had my sea glass green small bottle collection. So I ended up just tucking them here in the tree and putting the lights right inside of them so they are illuminated and from a distance all you do see is the soft sea blue green and then if you get up close you can see the collection of bottles that I cherish once again from my childhood. Those were dug up at my childhood home and they have been with me for years. Our adopted ancestor Horatio Haskell's overlooking the dining room and this Reed and Barton set is special to me. This used to belong to my aunt, then my mother, and my mother handed it down to me. And yes, I do use it for serving coffee and tea. That's one thing about fine living is using things that you have, that little extra special touch. Why not? Why not use things instead of having them just sit collecting dust or just to look at and admire? Okay, don't judge me. This was the dried grasses that I had and I ended up just sticking in the greens because I was too cold to go outside to get rid of the grasses in the compost pile and I figured I'll just do the both together after the holidays. Hanging between the two windows is the rosebud wreath that I made this past fall. And here on the table I still have the two brass pheasants and the candle holder with the pine cones. I will probably put some greens here as well, but right now I needed a little break from Christmas decorating, and I think Willow needed a break from Christmas decorating too. At the end of this Christmas home tour video, there is the tutorial that I promised earlier, but I'd love to take this moment and thank you for visiting my home and lifestyle channel here on YouTube, especially during the Christmas home tour. I love opening my door to you. It inspires me to come up with some new ideas or remember old ideas that I haven't done since I was a child. It really inspires me. So thank you again for visiting and if you haven't already subscribed, I would love for you to do so. Please do so because it lets me know that you enjoy what I'm sharing. It lets others know that you enjoy what I'm sharing. This is a really quick overview of how I put garland on my mantle. Now, I'm okay with putting small brad nails in our wood mantles. Uh, my parents used to hang our Christmas stockings by nails, so I'm okay with doing this. Um, I string from one end to the other, a tight string, and then I mark the center. Now, if I have a very heavy garland, I would use a command strip here facing backwards to hold it, but this I don't expect to be too, too heavy. I then put brad nails on the leg of the mantle because I'm going to trail the garland down and I wrap the wire garland um, 
stems, for the lack of better words, around the string and around the nails. Now, if you have a mantle that is stone, let's say, or something you don't want to put nails or can't use command strips, you could put a separate board all the way across your mantle that's cut to width and length. And if you have enough space to put, let's say, a carpenter's clamp on each end, that would hold the piece of wood to your mantle top. Then you could nail and put your string to hold the garland on. I hope that made sense. But these processes have worked for me in the past for clients. They've worked for me for years. And hopefully if you've been looking for a way to hold garland on your mantle, it will work for you too. You can see more of my shenanigans over on Instagram or Facebook. If you're watching this through my website, you could visit YouTube to subscribe. Or if you're on YouTube, just hit that circle button below and you will be subscribed. Bye now.